I'm proud to introduce to the program Dr. Martin Clark and Dr. Louise Arnold. Thank you both for being here so much. Thank That's you. Great to be here. So do you mind talking a bit more about your research and what exactly how a stream flow can help tell forecast a forecast? Water research is big at the University of Saskatchewan. Um, we've got a group, a research group in computational hydrology, where we're building tools and developing data sets that helps us predict water. So a lot of our work is um, predicting water um, for very large river basins like the Saskatchewan River Basin. I can talk a little bit more, yeah. uh, thanks Martin, about stream flow forecasting. Um, so we have to use a lot of observations to do these types of forecasts. And as Martin mentioned, we use observations of how much snow there is currently on the ground and observations of the, the water flowing through rivers as well. And so using all of these decades of observations that have been collected by other people, we're then able to run these mathematical tools that essentially infer the relationship between that snow on the ground and that river flow, and that can then predict that into the future. So put it simply, if we have a lot of snow on the ground or up in the mountains in the winter, then the model uh, is likely to say that there will be a lot of water flowing through the river in the spring, but it can obviously be different depending on how much rain there is also going to be and what the temperature is. So on the press release that I received, it said that this will also help with effects from climate change and recognizing those. How will it do that? Climate change is something that we've got to incorporate in everything that we're doing these days. Um, so what we're seeing, especially in river basins in Canada, is um, a lot of changes in like uh, the timing of snowmelt. And so a lot of the snowmelt that we're seeing is occurring earlier in the year. Um, so um, a lot of the older models that are based on fixed relationships aren't able to account for those dynamic changes. Also later in the summer, um, we're seeing a lot more glacier melt and we're needing to incorporate that in our models as well. So you have received quite a big grant of $180,000. How would that help the research? How, what is it going towards with the research? So Louise is a um, scientist in our in our team, and a lot of the grant money that we're receiving will be to um, pay um, for Louise's salary to complete the research. We've got a, um, a number of projects that are supporting the work that we're doing, and uh, most of the work that we're doing in computational hydrology is computer-based. Um, so we're spending a lot of our, our time analyzing big data sets and um, building numerical models um, so that we can um, develop new predictions um, that are going to be important for people, um, particularly in the agricultural sector. Essentially, it's going to enable us to use all of these big data sets and run these uh, mathematical models or tools on supercomputers and then using more and then better data as well. So we're working a lot with... ECCC, who, is, who has compiled this new so that snow data set, for example, that from like snow observations that have been collected all around Canada. So it's all in one big data set that we can now use and try and improve these forecasts in order to give people earlier uh, warnings of events happening. What's the system of when you have the results, how are those then used? We're not producing operational forecasts. Um, so what we're what we're doing is um, providing the um, advances in science that are necessary um, to improve the operational forecasts that are produced. Um, in this case, um, by the Environment Canada, our work is you know a kind of a step upstream. <laughs> pun, uh, sorry about the pun. <laughs> in terms of like de developing the science capabilities that are necessary to improve the streamflow forecasting, uh, but the streamflow forecasting responsibilities are primarily provincial in Canada, um, and um, also you know there's some initiatives you know that um, that go across provinces. Um, that's kind of like the background, but you know the um, the streamflow forecasts are being used in a number of different ways, you know, around the world. Really, what we're trying to do is like state of the art science, where we're bringing the latest tools and and observations that we can get, uh, and we're also working very closely with forecasters, for example, in Alberta, because they use similar tools as well. So we're trying to find ways where we can improve the forecast at the end of the day and give even earlier warnings, and working with international experts around the world as well who work on these topics in order to be able to 
find better methods that give you more accurate forecasts at the end of the day. Thank you both again so much for being here to answer my questions today. Okay. Yep. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you very much.